Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing today? This is Gregory Wilds coming live to you from Houston, Texas with his inspirational morning walk. Hey, for first-time listeners, I just get some exercise in the mornings and I share my thoughts with you guys. Good morning, Tessa. Good morning, cuz. How are you doing today? Yes, I share my thoughts with you guys. Whatever I'm inspired to talk about, I would just share it with you guys while I'm getting my exercise. It's a little cool day today. We're in the um, we're in the mid, low to mid 40s. The sun is not up yet, so it's it's just a little um, little cool. So I can sit in here today, get it done, where I can go back out and put my hands in my pockets or put on my little glove while I'm walking. So. I don't get uh, feel too cold. Good morning, Jillian. Good morning. I see you got sunshine by you there. Our sun is not quite up yet, but we're in for a sunny day today. It should be a nice day. Heading all the way. That's how the temperatures here in Houston is, is, um, is man. We start off in like this um, lower 40s, and we're going to end off in the 70s by the time it's all said and done. So we usually have some big 30 to 40 degree shift some days in the weather so yeah that's how it is here but it's still good weather still good weather for me to get some work in right so i hope everything is great wherever you guys are and a happy monday to everyone happy monday hope everyone had a great great weekend hey if today i can just drop a quick little word of um some of the laws of success some of the laws of success um there we can look and see what the bible um What's success according to the Bible? We look at some, a few. Um, okay, Jillian is set up, but still cloudy. Okay. Yeah, we can look at a few scriptures here where the Bible talk about success, right? About success, right? What's success? I look up the dictionary definition for success. The noun says success is the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. The accomplishment of an aim or purpose, right? And I heard um, Steve Harvey once said, I was listening to some of his material one time and all the success and all of that. And he was saying a lot of the success books and all that that we go and buy, it, it's just all the book of Proverbs and all of that kind of stuff. If we read the Proverbs and stuff like that, we wouldn't really need to He'll go and buy any book of success because, you know, God spell it out there for us what we need to do to succeed. So we'll just take a few and look at those and see what the Bible talk about, about um, um, you know, what success really is, right? So let's look at Proverbs 16.25. Let's start out with that. Proverbs 16.25, right? So there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, but it ends is the way of death. He said, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. So he's saying there is going to be a way to us that seems right. We want this. We want this. This seems so right to us. But just maybe it's not what he has for us, right? It's not the not what he has for us. But this way it seems right to us. We're not asking no questions. We're not trying to check with him. We're just going right ahead. Because I want this. Maybe it's this job. Maybe it's this person you want to be with. Maybe it's this business deal. Maybe whatever it is. You just want, want this. And this seems right to you. You're going full steam ahead without looking at the details. Without looking at the fine prints. Without looking at anything. Because this seems right to me. I just need this. And I going right straight, full force ahead, right? And he's saying it ends in the way of death, right? Because you ain't stopping to look at nothing. You're just going ahead. This is what I want, and this is what I'm going to do, right? So that's how we followed up in Proverbs 16, 3. He said, okay, hold down. Proverbs 16, 3, trying to say, slow down, slow down, slow down. I know that seems right to you, right? But in Proverbs 16, 3, he's saying, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans, right? He said, the thing that seems right to you, run it by me first. Run it by me first, see what if I see if that's in the cards for you coming from me. Because if it's not in the cards, if it's not in my cards, um, it's going to end up in some, it, you're going to end up in the way of death. If it's not in my cards, or one of the translations said death or destruction, right? can be destroying yourself if it's not in the cards, if it's not in my cards, right? So he said, run it by me first. So no, it seems right. I know it seems right, man. It looks good. But run it by me first and see 
if it's something I have for you, if it's one of the plans that I have for you. Right? It's in Proverbs 16, 3, saying, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans, man. He gonna He gonna point you in the right direction, right? If it's not something He has for you. He can find many ways of talking you out to it or 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 showing you why you shouldn't go and do that particular thing. But the thing is you have to have the discipline to listen. And not just I going to do it regardless, right? So let's say Proverbs nineteen twenty one. Let's see what Proverbs nineteen twenty one say. Say you can make plans. You can make plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. You can make your plans, but it's the Lord's purpose will prevail. Or one of the translations said, "There's many, many plans in a man's heart, but only the Lord's purpose will prevail." If you're looking at the NIV or I think King James or one, then put it like that. This is the NLT translation. You can make your plans, but only the Lord's purpose will prevail, and that's what happens to us sometimes. We make our plans just like this way that seems right to us. We make this plan, we didn't run it by Him, and we going ahead and do it full force, and His purpose trying to prevail in our life and and we fighting we fighting we going one way and he trying to take us another way right we going one way and he trying to take us another way what do you think can happen there what do you think that happened there right if you're trying to run and somebody trying to hold you back right you want to go this way you're trying to run and somebody got this rope on you or something trying to hold you back trying to drag you in the other direction What's going to happen, right? You're going you're gonna to feel tired. You're going to feel exhausted and you're still in the same spot. Maybe you're just going a little inch. You're not all the energy you put in trying to move forward. You're not going because something else trying to pull you in a different direction. So that's how we get stressed out. That's how we get frustrated. And that's how we, we you know, some mornings we don't even want to wake in the mornings, right? And remember, Les Brown, I never did this research on my own. I never did this research on my own, but I was listening to some of Les Brown, the motivational speaker, some of his material, and he was saying that uh, he did some research and most heart attacks happen on Mondays. Most heart attacks happen on Mondays because people dread going to that job that they hate, but they just got to go. It's the right thing to do to take care of the family, right? And most heart attacks is that people stressed out Sunday afternoon. They're just stressing because they got to go to this job the next day that they hate. And it's a, and it's, and it's, and it's all week. You got to go and spend another five days there. That's the people we say hate Mondays, but love Fridays, right? They hate Mondays, but love Fridays. Hate Mondays because I got to go and be stuck at this job that I hate for five whole days. But Friday come, you're like, yes, EGIF. Thank God it's Friday. I'm away from this place for two whole days. And then that's what he's saying, right? And I can remember my um my um experience with this. Let me share a quick experience with this, man. I can talk to you for a sound about this, right? I had my plans, I make my plans, I had some really good stuff and plans and all what I'm gonna study and all what I'm gonna do. In an out of five, ten years, I was supposed to be the world's best engineer and I I mean, I had some nice plans. I had my whole thing set out, right? But I didn't run it by him. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't um, look at Proverbs sixteen three. I didn't even know they exist. I didn't say commit your plans. Whatever you do to the Lord, He will establish your plans. This was my plan. I was more on Proverbs sixteen twenty five. There's a way that seems right, right? And I going right ahead. I said, "Well, nice plans, really good plans, right?" And boop, um, two months before my final exams come up at um, for my associates there, um, I got an opportunity to go on the cruise ships, right? I got an opportunity to go on the cruise ships. And I was like, man, I forget this. This is not what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead. I'm sticking to my plan. But more and more, I decide now. I said, let me run this by God now, right? You remember they said, train up a child the way he should go, right? I come up in a Christian home. I say, let me run this by God now and see what he wants me to do. He definitely not going to tell me to go nowhere. I just want confirmation for my plan right now. But the more I put it to him, he said, hey, that's what you need to do. Go ahead, take this opportunity. And he showed me numerous reasons, which I can't get into all the time. He showed me numerous reasons that I should go and that's the right thing to do. I said, right thing to do two months before my exams? God, you sure this is you? I say, yep, this is me go 
they show me a lot of reasons that convince me man when i make the decision i cry i cry i cry i cry i cry people didn't know this a lot of a lot of first time people were knowing this i cry right i cry when i make the decision anyhow i went but i went and i did it and i was depressed because it was not my plans this was a this was totally different to my plans right and that's how i had a lot of dreams and like all kind of stuff and i was so ungrateful i was like over 26 20 26 27 i already bought a house and all of that you know i had a lot of things and things going on but i couldn't see what i had right i was so depressed and i was so ungrateful because i didn't get into execute my plan right and i can remember clearly guys clearly the morning about between four and five o'clock in the morning i you know and god was so upset with me this is one time i know he talked to me clearly and he was mad he was upset he said you stop being ungrateful stop looking at all what you don't have and start looking at what you have because I can take everything from you right now. He said, I have a plan for you. And you need to be relaxed and go with my plan. Man, man he said, I can take everything from you. Stop looking at what you don't have and start looking at all what you do have. Man, and he was mad. Like, you, like you're upset with your child and you're scolding them. And I could just imagine. Man, I, I wake up the morning a different person. I say, you know what, God, you're right. I'm sorry. I am really sorry. I kind of forget because I get caught up in my way, my way, my way. And I forget he, he run things. And he scold me, man. I, I, I wake up a different person because I was going, you know, they said, if you go with the tide, it's easier if you're going with the tide, right? But if you're going against the tide, and that's what I was doing, I was going against the tide. His purpose was trying to prevail in my life. And I was going against the tide trying to work my upset because i didn't get into work my plan right and he told me i have a plan for you right i have a plan for you right and 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 probably he was trying to remind me of sending me back to the bible to look at jeremiah 29 11 jeremiah 29 11 i was so caught up in my word i i I'm kind of forgetting him didn't read him the scriptures i you know i just caught up on my 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 me 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 what i want to do on jeremiah 29 11 i guess this is what he was trying to get me back to jeremiah 29 11 said for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you this is what his plans is to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future guess that's where he was going back to for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you see what his plans gonna do his plans are going to prosper us it's not to harm us but to give us a hope and a future right he said, I know the plans. So run your plans by me. Let's see if your plans line up with my plan. And if I try to send you in a different direction, you need to go and don't fight it. Because that's when you can be frustrated. That's when you can be depressed, right? If these plans don't line up, you're, going, um, you, you're not going with the flow of the tide. You're trying to go against the flow of the tide, right? And then this is all we're trying to do all of this for, guys. Ephesians 1, 3 through 4, right? He said, Praise be to God and Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So he said he got all of these blessings. He blessed us already, right? He know the plans he have for us, Jeremiah 20, 11. And he said he blessed us to achieve all of those plans. All these things are ready in the spiritual realm. Bless. We just got to do our part here to bring it forth in this realm. And if we get the plans that he has for us, this will can give us um, the prosperity and give us the hope, the future. Good morning, Renita. And we can be less stressed out. We can be less stressed out once we get the plans that he has for us and not our own plans that we have yes make your plans run it by him and let's see if he line up with what he has for you and if he try to send you in a different direction tweak some stuff on the plans you tweak it and don't ask the questions you tweak it because he trying to tell you he know the plans he have for you right and and in ephesians um 1 4 is saying for he chose us in him before the creation of this world to be holy and blameless in his sight so he know what he got for us before the foundation of this world and if we try and line up with that 
man, your life is going to be less stressed. Mr. Jeremy Wilkinson, good morning. How are you? You're going to be less stressed in the things you're doing and, and, and your life is going to be more happy. And success for everyone is different, man. It's different. Success is not only about making a billion dollars. It's about doing the things that he created you to do. They can give you joy and they can give you peace and they can give you a sense of purpose, man. Right, and we can get into the um, next topic about your about your spiritual gifts. And once you're working in those gifts, that can give you the peace and that can give you joy. Right, so you can use these scriptures here. You can find some more in your in your praying, man. Say, God, you know, establish the plans. Good morning, Mr. Ivor Thompson. Good morning. How are you? Right, and you 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 pray that your plans line up. You pray that you achieve what He wants you to achieve. Let it be His will and not your will that prevail in your life. Let it be about him and not about you, man. And when you get that line up and in sync with him there, man, man, you're going to find the peace and joy in your life, right? So remember, make your plans, but run it by him. Proverbs 16, 3, say, commit whatever you do to the Lord and he will establish your plans, right? Run it by him. Make sure it's lining up with what he wants you to do, right? And you're going to find more peace. You're going to be less stressed out in your day. I'll just give you a bonus. A bonus here for some people might need to hear this. This is Proverbs 3, 7. Proverbs 3, 7 saying, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Say, don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't be wise. I lay, I lay out everything there for you. You don't got to go and reinvent the wheel. You just got to look at my laws because that's what governing the life. Say, don't be wise in your own eyes. Say, fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body. Here, when you do this, we bring in health to your body and nourishment to your bones, man. Who, who, which one of us don't need that, right? You say, don't be wise in your own eyes, man. You don't have to go and reinvent the wheel, man. Everything is laid out there for us. Say, just fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. It's just a bonus for today. Somebody probably need to be reminded of this, um, this little proverb here who going through something. Right? Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try. It's laid out there for you. So just fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body. You probably need some 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 healing right now. This is what can bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones, guys. So guys, I'm gonna leave it there. But this is a simple way of, of success. You wanna succeed in what you're doing. Run it by him. Run it by him, right? Because you can make your plans, you said in Proverbs 19.21. You can make many plans, right? But only the large purpose will prevail in your life. Recognize that. Go with the flow. Go with the tide. And don't try going against the tide, guys. So have a blessed day, guys. And we'll talk again on Wednesday. Have a blessed day. Okay, bye.